Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. After spending about four years in the UK prison, former governor of Delta State, James Ibori, returns to Nigeria. Federal government dismisses prediction of famine, says adequate arrangement has been put in place to prevent hunger. House committee investigating CCTV project in Abuja and Lagos says the $470 million project is a total failure. And U.S. President Donald Trump vows to overturn legal rulings suspending his ban on travelers from seven mainly Muslim states. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website. It's channelcv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device. Log on to m.channelstv.com or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. And having the Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the iWitness feature so you too can be a part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the iWitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures videos or news of happenings around you. And talking about pictures, here are some of them you sent into our eyewitness portal. This is from Abu Odua local government area of River State. Our eyewitness reporter wants the government to revive this Moribond primary health care center. And this next one is from Mina in Niger State. Our eyewitness reporter is asking traders to stop overloading their goods and vehicles. Then we got this one from Sapler in Delta State. Our eyewitness reporter is warning residents against inflammable objects. We thank you so much for sending in those pictures and we do encourage you to keep them coming. The federal government is assuring residents in the Northeast that the prediction of farming in the region in 2017 is misplaced. Although the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development Chief Audubey admitted that there will be hard times in some states due to the insurgency. The Farming Early Warning System Network, an agency supported by the United States Agency for International Development, had predicted farming in the Northeast due to Boko Haram attacks. Farming, very unlikely. There will be tough times in the Northeast because for nearly five years, they've not been able to go to their farms. And the North is a major agricultural zone, especially Bono, Yobe, which were the main theaters of war. On the other hand, people do not know there is no state in Nigeria as prepared for agriculture as Bono State. I was consultant to Bono State government at the very height of Boko Haram. I went there 15 times and people thought I was crazy. And I went around with the governor. We had a brush with danger once in a while. There are more tractors in Borno State than in some 10 states added up. So people are not unaware of the threat of food shortages, the fact that 2 million people were displaced. But I'm not sure we're going to stand by and watch people starve to death. It's not likely. There may be food shortages, there may be high prices. But as for starvation and famine as predicted, no. There is another harvest of rice and grains coming up by April. There's dry season farming. So we're not idle. And we're aware that we run the risk of having severe food shortages and high prices. So I don't think the expectation of famine is likely. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Audu Ube. Now let's take you back to Ogara in Delta State, which is the hometown of the former governor of Delta State, James E. Brewery, where he has been received by a massive crowd of supporters. Now some of Mr. Ibori's friends and political associates believe that his return is a big relief and a welcome development for the People's Democratic Party. They believe that with Mr. Ibori back in the fold, the party will find better direction. Our joy knows no ban. The man that left us long time ago is back again. 
after he has been freed and certified fit and prepared to be hope. Today, we are joyful in receiving him. And the crowd you are seeing here, the enthusiasm that has been displayed here today, show that we missed him a lot. And this is the only way for us to appreciate that our leader, who left us long ago, is back to our fold. First of all, we have fought so hard for the release of our leader, our political leader and father. The, the crowd is overwhelming. So we give thanks to God Almighty for his safe return home. And we pray that uh, all our faithful people, faithful, should be steadfast now that we have a pro pure political direction. The federal government is suspending the issuance of permits for timber logging in Nigeria's forests from January to March. According to the Minister of Environment, Amina Mohammed, she explains that within this time frame, the federal government will roll out its deforestation policy. She revealed this while inaugurating an interministerial committee on afforestation in Abuja. All of these forests provide us with several benefits, such as the protection of the environment, which is really mitigation and climate change that has become such a serious challenge to the world, enhancement of the quality and availability of fresh water supplies, serving as home to more than half of our terrestrial species. In the recent past, the forests have gradually and at an alarming rate been degraded and deforested, arising from intensive exploitation, in most cases logging, of timber for domestic and export markets, extensive agricultural practices, conversions of forest lands to other land use, expansion of infrastructural corridor through forest estates and criminalities within these forest estates. All of these have led to the reduction of forest cover from 10% of the country's land mass at independence to less than 5% forest cover at present. And I think you'll all agree with me, this is alarming. The 3.5% rate of deforestation for per annum is a crisis and it's currently just absolutely unacceptable. And this is all especially if we must try to achieve sustainable development and environmental sustainability. As Nigeria and other African countries continue to experience unstable economic outlook, one sector that experts say has the potential to help change that story is tourism. With the sector contributing 9% of global GDP and Africa claiming a 5% share in worldwide arrivals, countries such as Nigeria and South Africa are looking for ways to up the numbers. Our correspondent, Indy Thompson, has this report. In 2014, the United Nations World Tourism Organization calculated a total of 56 million international tourists in Africa, an increase from 26 million in year 2000. The attraction has always been the rich gift of nature, abundant in beaches, wildlife, safari, and other packages. However, these have remained largely untapped, with just 2% increase in year 2014. The way forward, according to stakeholders, is partnership and coordination within the continent. Institutions such as the AU, the African Union, are starting to pull all the pieces together to see how do we shape ourselves as one um, kind of um, organization. And within that, trying to address some of those things. There are challenges around implementation of the things that we decide on. Uh, open skies is one of them. I mean, that was signed probably in the early 90s around freedom of airlines within the African continent, free flow. We're still not quite there as yet, basically. So, but it starts with intent. And I think as we move along, we're going to start to see some of these things come through. As a country, Nigeria has exhibited great potentials in tourism with a 1.56 billion naira, which is 1.7% contribution to the GDP in 2014, and a possible rise to 5.8% per annum in 2024, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. The federal government has included the sector in its diversification plan, and getting individuals involved is the strategy. If you are able to let the local people realize that the huge, the, the, the largest percentage of the benefit is theirs in terms of creating economy in kind of in terms of creating jobs for them all tourism sites 
are located within communities. Most of those sites have been there before the people existed. So the people have taken proprietary rights over there. Other players on the continent are also suggesting trans-border travels as another strategy to develop the sector. Calling South Africa basically as, uh, as an ideal tourism destination. And there is also the opportunity for likewise and Nigeria to market themselves in South Africa as a tourism destination. And this is where the reciprocity really comes in and gels in quite nicely. The UNTW forecasts that international travels into Africa could hit 134 million by 2030, thereby increasing the global market share of the continent to 7% and increasing economic growth of the continent. Ini Thompson reporting for Channel Television News. The Chairman House Committee on the Investigation of the Provision of Closed-Circuit Television Cameras, otherwise called CCTV, in Abuja and Lagos, Mr. Ahmed Yerima, has described the project as a total failure. According to the lawmaker, the failure of the project to meet its objectives has cost the federal government a lot of money. In the meantime, some security experts in Abuja have attributed the recent rise in crime to the inability to, to this failed project. The spate of high-profile criminality and terror attacks in the country, including the October 1, 2010 bombing in Abuja, the suicide bombing at the United Nations building, and that of the police headquarters, gave rise to the installation of closed circuit television cameras within the city center and its environs by the past administration. The objective is for security agents to check track and arrest criminals who pose a threat to the security of the federal capital territory and other big cities in the country as obtainable in the developed world. 470 million U.S. dollars is said to have been spent to install the surveillance cameras in Lagos and Abuja for this purpose. Three years after, the Abuja CCTV project, completed in 2014, has not achieved its objective. The chairman of the House Ad Hoc Committee investigating the project describes it as a total failure. The whole project is about 470 million US dollars, about 150 billion Nigerian naira, and a lot of money spent. But unfortunately, the whole project is kind of a failure because of a number of issues related to the project. There are about 1,000 CCTV cameras here in Abuja and another 1,000 in Lagos. Now about 23 of them either vandalized because there are no measures being taken into consideration during the installation to safeguard it. An investigative tour around the city of Abuja reveals that most of the CCTV installations have been vandalized. Some security experts argue strongly that the project is poorly implemented and that it negatively affects the efforts of security agents to secure the city. A CCTV would have helped with some of the crimes that have happened currently if facial recognition software has been installed with the algorithm telling us, okay, this particular face has appeared so many times in so many places. You now see a pattern. You can be able to thrill, but we don't have that. Most of the CCTV in the city centers are not also working. Some vandalize. Those vandalize it, they don't even know them. Why? Because the CCTVs were not working before they were vandalized. If they were, they would have been able to see the face. Apart from the security implications of the vandalized CCTVs, the chairman of the House Ad Hoc Committee on the investigation of the CCTV project also explains its huge financial loss on the government. The project on whole sum, it will generate something like 20 billion per annum for the Nigerian government if you utilize the data transmission capacity, but unfortunately the frequencies also were mismanaged. 1,000 surveillance cameras were installed in Abuja to boost security. Many argue that crime rate will be reduced if these cameras are all active. Still ahead of the news at 10, Nigeria's stock market falls 2% in four sessions this week as investors react to negative corporate earning results for 2016. That's on Business News. Join us again.